All right, part two of my uh, very, very confusing, nonsensical rant here. Uh, I started off doing one thing and ended up in uh, Transformers land. Don't understand that. And uh, just a little behind-the-scenes thing. Every time I set up my camera to film these things, the poor dog goes b into the back room and puts herself in her crate. I don't know if she thinks I'm yelling at her or what, but I just thought that would be thought that was a funny thing to, to talk about. That the dog keeps uh, leaving the room because I think she knows I get a little loud. So <clears throat> I had said uh, I started talking about the Amazing Spider-Man Two movie, and then I went off on Transformers. But, uh, the, the thing I was talking about with the whole Transformers thing is that how all, everybody on the internet has become a snob. And everybody has to agree with everybody else. If one, like, somebody big, if somebody that you follow a lot, they, they hate something, you'll hate it too. And I don't like that at all. But, uh, as far as the Spider-Man movie goes, I think a lot of factors go into play. For one, this was a franchise that was not that old. It was not that old. It's... How old? Hold on one sec. I'll be right back. I gotta get the uh, Spider-Man DVD. So... Let's see. 2000... So, you're thinking 2001 was the first Spider-Man. Because, like, 2001, 2002. Because that was the year, of course, uh, September 11th happened and the Trade Center went down. Because the trailer for the original Spider-Man had a spider web in between the World Trade Center. And they took that out because of all that stuff. So you're thinking 2002, uh, the first Spider-Man came out with Tobey Maguire and all that and they were good movies. Uh, I liked the original Spider-Man. I liked the second one. Third one, no. <laughs> but I, I have a whole other rant on that, but this is what I'm talking about. This movie's not that old. It's 2000... It's not even 20 years old, and it got remade. And people say, well, it's not a remake, it's a reboot. What's the difference? <laughs> the answer is, there is no difference. It got rebooted. When you take a character, put new actors, and write a completely different story for him, it's called a reboot. Like, I don't know... From what I understand... They were going to make Spider-Man 4 after 3. But between all of the the backlash from 3 and then the studio wanted one thing and Sam Raimi wanted another thing and they conflicted and everything went to hell. So he left and but at the same time they had only signed on I think for 3 movies. I think Tobey Maguire had only signed on for 3 movies. So, it really wasn't going to, it wasn't going to matter. But, I just think that Spider-Man, more than any other Marvel superhero, has been completely overexposed. He's had three movies, and again, there's going to be people arguing that, well, Iron Man has three movies, and you know what? That's a lot of movie. That's, I think Iron Man's even more exposed than Spider-Man. It, it's hard to... I don't think they should have remade the movies. There. There I said it. And if they did... I like The Amazing Spider-Man. I like the very first movie. I thought it was really good. It was different. And I like different. Th th that's my one thing. And th the second thing... And this is... Proof of all the Marvel movies. Now, as I said in another video... Hold on. As I said in another video, Marvel has movies set up until 
2028. 14 years of movies they have ready to go. They're writing it right now. They're shooting them. They're getting them pre... Just pre-ready. Whatever. Whatever you want to call it. I'm not an expert on this shit, so I can't be uh, illiterate. But... It, it, it goes two ways. I think Marvel... They have such an ego right now. They have this... We can do no wrong attitude. And I don't think that helps them. I don't think that helps them at all. In fact, I think it hurts them. So, because here's how it is. You have Iron Man, which was huge. Then you have Iron Man 2, which is even bigger. Then they start incorporating other Marvel groups, like the Incredible Hulk. They do Thor. They do Captain America. They all do gangbuster numbers. And midway through all of these movies, there's rumors circulating that they're going to do an Avengers movie, which you never thought was going to happen because there's just no way you could get all of these properties together in one movie and do something like that. And you know what? They did it. They did it the Avengers, and it was an amazing movie. Critically acclaimed, fan acclaimed. It was one of the few times where the superhero team-ups got it right. And now, Marvel feels we can just ride this gravy train for as long as we want. So now they're they're making sequels of the sequels. They're making... The, the big thing is the Avengers 2 is being shot as we speak. Um, they have... Uh, the, there's another big story that how Captain America 3 is going to be released the same day as Superman vs. Batman. And you know what? Maybe 10 years ago this would have been big news. But here's the thing. If you're... If you want to divide an audience... And you want to really determine which one's the better movie. Captain America or Superman vs. Batman. Here's what you do. And I've brought this up before. Show each movie on the same day at the same time but for one day. Now follow me on this one. You could argue that releasing them on the same day is going to determine which one is better. No. The fact is people are going to go see both of them. Maybe even on the same day. So the numbers aren't really going to matter. If you would say, okay, we're going to show Man of Steel 2 and Captain America 3 the exact same time, let's say 12 o'clock in the afternoon, the exact same time at the exact same moment, and it's only going to be for one day, then you would find out which movie more people want to go see. Then you would have a valid argument. If it was only for one day, you could say that, oh, well, Captain America is more popular than Man of Steel 2, or vice versa. H having them release on the same weekend does nothing to prove which franchise is better. Because people are just going to go see the same movie. They'll go see the, the 4.30 Man of Steel and then swing over and see the 7.30 Avenger or a Captain America movie. It, it, it doesn't matter. But th this is the thing. That's starting to thunder. Marvel has such balls now. They have... They are to the point where they feel they can do no wrong. They can put out anything and it'll make money. And I'm hoping with the critical panning of The Amazing Spider-Man 2 that this will be kind of their wake-up call. To say, like, okay, guys, we can't, we can't be half-assed about this. We have to put out really good movies like we used to. Because here's the thing. Once The Avengers 2 is done, once Age of Ultron is done, 
And they've already said that uh, the upcoming Guardians of the Galaxy is going to coincide with already the Avengers 3. So right away, Marvel is planning even right away for the Avengers 3. It's in their sights. They know it's coming. Here's the problem. Robert Downey Jr., I believe, is only signed on contract for one more movie. Maybe one, maybe two. I know at least Avengers. After that, I'm not sure. Chris, uh, Chris Evans, who plays Captain America, he has signed on to do, I believe, Avengers 2 and another Captain America. And then he's done. In fact, there's rumors that he may even be retiring. Uh, I don't know if Chris Hemsworth, who plays Thor, is on the same thing or not, but it, it, here's the thing. You have all of these contracted actors who are going to leave after their contracts are done. That means they're going to have to be replaced. And I'll tell you right now, I do not and I mean this, I do not see anybody else being able to pull off Iron Man better than Robert Downey Jr. That role seems tailor-made for that man. You know, the charisma, the, the the cocky attitude, just the way he carries himself. You you don't see Robert Downey Jr. playing a character. You see him as Tony Stark. You know, that's the that's the sign of a great actor is when you don't see them playing the character. You see them as the character. Like you couldn't see anybody else doing this character except for them. And that's how I feel with Iron Man. Robert Downey Jr. is Iron Man. He is Tony Stark. I don't see anybody else being able to pull that off. But, that's what Marvel has to consider. And I don't know if they're really considering this or if they have other plans or... God forbid... I hope to God this is not what they're thinking that the contract will come up, Robert Downey Jr. will get ready to walk, he, you know, he's done with Iron Man. I hope that they're not thinking in the back of their mind, well, we'll just triple his salary and we'll get him to sign on. We'll get him to sign on for five more movies because we'll just keep paying. Yeah, but why not? Like, what are you making right now? You're making uh, $30 million a movie? Well, we'll give you $90 million a movie. Yeah. Yeah, throw throw more money your way. You'll do whatever the hell we want you to. We'll put Iron Man in a tutu and you'll wear it because we're going to pay you money. I, I, I hope that is not their game plan to, to uh, bank on these guys just taking their money and doing more movies for them. Because even if I was an actor, I probably wouldn't do that. Because that's a sign of arrogance. And I don't know if they if that's how it is. It would not surprise me. And I hope that, again, I really hope that's not what they're doing. I, But again, I don't, I don't see any other way. I don't see any other person to play these roles. And you, you could have said the same thing about Tobey Maguire as Spider-Man. Yeah. He was the quintessential Spider-Man in the eyes of a lot of people. Andrew Garfield, he doesn't seem like the nerdy Peter Parker. He seems like the kind of guy that would go and ask a girl out on a date and be okay with it. He, I guess the whole role of Peter Parker is that he's a nerd. He, he's, um, he, he's an outcast. He's, what, oh, gee, what's the word? Odd lack of a better word he's odd so and what else was there a problem um oh another thing that the Marvel movies have seemed to do a lot and I don't think it helps them every Marvel movie that is being released right now is leading up to something else and by that I mean in um, like the first Iron Man movie, you have Agent Coulson showing up, saying like, "I'm Agent Coulson. I'm from uh, Shield. I don't know the whole abbreviation for it, but like, I'm from Shield." 
that's a sign that S.H.I.E.L.D. is going to be coming on soon. Iron Man 2, we see uh, Nick Fury finally show up. And he's like, I'm putting a team together. It's, you know, the Avengers Initiative, so. And they throw in little bits like, oh, here's Captain America's S.H.I.E.L.D. <clears throat> Pardon me. And, you know, everything, there's like little hints and little tidbits of everything leading into it. Um, with Thor, I'd actually watch this again because somebody had told me that in Thor, if you look in the, the vault, the Asgardian vault, you see the Infinity Gauntlet which is the weapon that Thanos, the Mad Titan, is after, who was seen at the end of the Avengers, who is reported to be the major bad guy in the entire Avengers franchise, who the Guardians of the Galaxy are connected with because they're fighting, um, what's his name, Ronan, Ronan, I forget what it is, Ronan something, who is an agent of Thanos, so it's all tying together. And we see all of these little tidbits of information of future movies. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. But when it's the focal point of the movie, when I am watching these movies and say, and thinking to myself, okay, where's the next like where's the uh where's the hint for the next movie? Because Thor, the Dark World did it. With um, at the end during the credit, this is they all always, always do that at the end of the credit or midway through the credits. Uh, it shows um, Sif and Volstag, I believe his name is, going to the collector and taking the shard of the ether with them. Like we can't have two Infinity Gems in Asgard. We have the Tesseract, but we can't have this. You keep this. And, you know, he's like, of course I'll take this because I am. I am trustworthy and honest, and you can always trust me. Mm -hmm. And they walk away, and he's like, oh, yes, yes, one down, six to go. <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's one of the Infinity Gems for the Infinity Gauntlet, which is what Thanos is after. It's all connecting together. And they do the exact same thing with Spider-Man 2. Or rather, the Amazing Spider-Man 2, because there's the scene in the trailer where Harry Osborn is walking down this hallway, and there you see Doc Ock's tentacles, you see Vulture's wings, I think uh, somebody said that there's Scorpion's suit in there, because they're going to be making a Sinister Six movie, and the Sinister Six, the lineup changes a lot, but I believe the core group was the Green Goblin, Doc Ock, I think Vulture, Kraven the Hunter, Maybe Scorpion and Rhino. Again, the, the, the lineup has changed for years. But, again, there's a throwback. The Sinister Six. We're going to have the Sinister Six in a movie. And, of course, they're making a Venom movie. And Venom, I don't even know if he was in Amazing Spider-Man 2. I don't... There's rumors that he is, but, again... That 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 would be the whole reason you want the you want to watch the Amazing Spider-Man two to find out the story that's happened beyond the Amazing Spider-Man in the first movie. Spider-Man spends most of the movie looking for the guy that shot his uncle because he has a tattoo on his hand, a very distinct tattoo. So every guy that he captures, he's looking for the tattoo on his hand. He's like, "All right, you're probably the guy." No, you're not. Damn it. All right. And then he catches another guy. And you're like, alright, this is probably the guy. Damn it! And the by the end of the first movie, he still hasn't found the guy. So, I don't know if they address that in the second movie or not. But that's something I want to know. I, I, don't, I don't care about the Sinister Six. I don't care about Venom in a Spider-Man unless he is purported to be the bad guy. And he's not. I think that's my big problem, is you're showing all of these cameos from people that are not supposed to be in this movie. I already think there's too many villains. There's Electro, there's the Green Goblin, and then there's Rhino. 
And I know Rhino, from what I've read, is only in the movie for a very short time. Very disappointing short time. However, that's still three villains, okay? I blame Batman for this, because Batman is the one that started adding two of everything. In Batman Returns, it was the Penguin, then Catwoman, teaming up against Batman. And then every other Batman after that had to have two. And then, you look at the fir very first Spider-Man, it was just the Green Goblin. That made sense. Because it was Norman Osborn, who saw, Spider who saw Peter Parker as the son he always wanted. And the Green Goblin wanted to destroy Spider-Man. Then... Spider-Man 2 came out. It was just Doc Ock. And again, there was an emotional tether there. This is what I'm talking about. An emotional tether between... There was, emotion, there was a tether between Spider-Man and the Goblin. Because, again, Norman Osborn and Peter Parker. They have a, a good friendship, good kinship. Spider-Man 2. Doc Ock. Wanted, he was going to change the world with his invention. He was going to create a new form of energy and... Because of that damn Spider-Man, he it would have worked. And he told you like hey, it was it was working. And then that blasted Spider-Man came in and ruined it all. Like, I, I'm gonna get him. And then Spider-Man three rolls around, and they decide, well, let's just throw three villains into it. Why not? So we get uh, Ninja Goblin who was Harry Osborn, I refuse to call him New Goblin, you get the Sandman, who was supposed to be the main villain, but he ends up being overshadowed because Venom shows up in this movie, and I say that with disdain because it's not Venom. It... Don't... I... All right. Switch gears to The Amazing Spider-Man. We have The Lizard. Kurt Connors. Who in this movie was involved with uh, Peter's parents. With their work at Oscorp. And he knows secrets. So again, emotional tether. You care about that because he knows something. He could help Peter help find out what happened to his parents. Amazing Spider-Man 2 rules around... Throw three villains at him. <laughs> we gotta get these people introduced because we have future movies to shoot. It... Bottom line, it's okay to have one villain. It's even okay to have two villains. But make sure you do something with them. Okay? I think that's my problem with Venom in Spider-Man 3. He is such a throwaway. Oh my god, he was such a throwaway. And that alone should have been in his own movie. Spider-Man 4 should have been Venom. A movie all about Venom. It would have made so much money. Oh my god, would it have made money. Because it's that's the one thing that all Spider-Man fans have wanted to see. They wanted to see Spider-Man against Venom. That's the big fight that I've always wanted to see at least. But, okay, that's my biggest problem, I think, with these Marvel movies, is they're not focusing on what they need to be focusing on, okay? The story. Focus on continuing the story. I don't care about the future movies, okay? It's okay to throw in a little tidbit here and there, but when I'm going to watch a movie, and all I care about is, okay, when are they going to show the clip for... Uh, Sinister Six, like, when are we going to see the, the, the tie-in with that? You're not doing a good job telling your story. And the fact that you have the X-Men in a closing credit scene on a Spider-Man movie, who cares? Why, why even do that? Because the writer of Spider-Man has already said... Spider-Man will not be doing any crossovers. He will not be crossing over with the X-Men. He will not be crossing over with the Avengers. He will not be crossing over with the Fantastic Four. 
Spider-Man is in his own world. He's doing his own thing. Which makes no sense. Because when Loki was attacking New York, it would have been funny to at least see a digitized Spider-Man swinging around trying to help, you know? Was he not was he not in the city during the attack during the Avengers? What where was he at the time? And a lot of people were asking that, like, where is Spider-Man at this point? I think even in Thor, the Dark World, when uh, Malakath is destroying England, I looked over at Ashley and I said, gee, I think the Avengers should be called by now. And she goes, yeah, where are they? And I looked at her and I said, they're, they're busy. <laughs> Iron Man's at... AA and the Incredible Hulk is uh, he's at anger management and I'm sure Shield's off doing so. I think Shield by this point was no, no that was before I don't know Shield and Captain America were busy doing something unless the movies all are happening at the same time like Iron Man three Thor the Dark World and Captain America Winter Soldier are all happening at the exact same time continuity wise. That's the only thing I can think of. But I have rambled on for who knows how long. But that that's my big thing. Why the the, the X-Men thing? Going back to that for real quick. They show a clip for Days of Future Past in a Spider-Man movie when it is very clear Spider-Man will not be with the X-Men. I don't know if they were trying to try to lure you in on that little hook, but from what I heard from the writer, he's not doing any crossover. He refused, He will not have any crossovers. But the way that uh, Amazing Spider-Man 2 is doing right now, I think crossovers might be the only thing saving him. You might want to rethink that. But, again, I hope that this movie is the wake-up call that Marvel needs to say, we have to... We have to focus. We have to get back on track. Focus on one movie at a time, for God's sakes, okay? So, I guess uh, the next movie is Guardians of the Galaxy, which I will admit I am kind of curious about. I don't know if I'm going to see it, but I am curious about it. Plus, uh, any movie featuring a talking gun-toting raccoon can be all bad. But, anyway, um, that's about all I got for now. Uh, I've rambled so long, and I'm hoping that it brings some people some form of entertainment. But, uh, I don't know if I'll shoot anything else tonight. I might. See if there's any reality TV out there I can complain about. But, until next time, uh, there's more random stuff out there that I'll talk about. And believe me, I can talk about it. Uh, I actually have an idea for another RABS coming up, and I'll probably shoot that tonight. So, until next time, I will see you guys later.